What is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa. I'm the Director of Marketing and Media for Warrior Rising, and here we have the exclusive opportunity to talk to the incredible veterans that are headed off into Detroit to pitch their awesome businesses to a panel of esteemed judges. And here today, we have the pleasure of speaking to Miriam Eberhardt, who is the CEO and founder of Purple Heart Pastries. So first of all, Miriam, welcome and congratulations. Thank you, Alyssa. I am so honored and grateful to have been selected. Absolutely. So jumping right in, what are you most excited about? What are you looking forward to next month? I am so excited, first of all, to meet the other competitors because the business has just looked amazing. And I'm just so excited to meet the people from Warrior Rising because after going through the university and taking the classes, it was such a big help. And just to get help with my own startup. So all of that information and all of that training was so beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy and grateful to have that to help me understand how to, you know, do my business better and to look forward to getting help with my pitch and how to present my business. So I'm excited about that part. Which is awesome. And you have a very really memorable name for your company. So kind of walk us through that story of Purple Heart Pastries. How did that start? What inspired you? All of the things. Okay. So I entered the U.S. Army as a food service specialist. (laughs) So at 19, I was a cook in the Army. And so I had a foundation, but never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would be a cook as, you know, my living. So I was a performing arts major in high school and college. So once I became a single mom, um, I needed to supplement my income. So I started a cookie business. And so me and my two girls, we would sell cookies at uh, barbershops, beauty shops, churches. And once they got older and I, they went to college, I went back to school and I went to culinary school in 2015. Wow. And I formed Manila Soul Food because one of my daughters is half Filipino. So I learned how to cook the food. And I wanted to preserve, you know, just some of the culture through food. So once I realized that there was this ingredient called ube, it's a purple yam, uh, I had not experimented with it much because I focused on the food. But once I focused on the dessert, I started experimenting making purple yam desserts. And so I took a class um, last year and I told them the name of my business. It was called Miriam's Rolling in the Dough. They were like... <laughs> That's too many words. (laughs) You need to change that. Yeah. And so one of the mentors helped me. He said, you know, you have this beautiful purple dessert. Why don't you lead into naming it something purple? You know, I said, and he said, and also you're a veteran. So lean into, you know, showcasing that you're a veteran and this purple dessert. I was like, that is excellent. So only just as of last year, Purple Heart Pastries became the name to feature these purple desserts. And I realized from researching, purple just meant a lot to so many people, not just veterans, not just military, but just people, you know, all over the world. That's the symbol of love, the symbol of loyalty, the symbol of royalty, the symbol of just so many things. And so I changed the name to Purple Heart Pasty. So I went and got my assumed name. So I just did that last year. And did that to focus on the purple yam and purple sweet potato desserts. I love that. That's a, such an incredible story. And uh, the, how the names, I always am so interested how names are selected. Yeah. Uh, and it does mean a lot. I mean, purple is a symbol of everything. So I absolutely love that. Um, yeah. Can you tell us with like the early stages of any of your, you know, it sounds like you're very resourceful. You're very inspired and you are very, um, you can work through hard times. You can work through adversity. So kind of talk to us through that. What do you do when a setback happens? How do you deal with that? You know what? I have thought about this so much because I feel like by me joining the army at 19, it set a foundation in me. I I always say this was like the hardest thing I have ever done, but the best decision I ever made because it set the foundation for me to be tough. And so looking forward, I of course would not have known that I would go so much adversity going through marriages and divorces and being a single mom and going through homelessness and going through just struggling as raising these girls so I always relied back on my military training and my military uh, experience because it was so hard (laughs) 
yeah for me it <laughs> yeah. was so hard but it taught me to be tough and it, it formed in me to be a soldier and soldiers don't quit nope. soldiers never give up soldiers get back up when they're knocked down and my and my children watched me do that you know and that's what inspired me that's what comes back to mind when I go through things and then of course my faith in God you know yeah. but then I also feel like God's hand was in that you know decision in making me a soldier because it caused me to also be a soldier in my faith so when things get tough I don't rely on myself I rely on him but then I also rely on that <laughs> that background and that training of just being a soldier no absolutely. and never giving up I love that. And I love that you touch on all those different things. I mean, I believe that when you have some military experience, you just be, you're built different. After you're that. built different. <laughs> you, you really are. There are a lot you of things really that, that just don't stress you. And like, you know, a regular jobs, so you're like, oh, like I've been through a little bit different, you know? So we you just... have no idea, people. <laughs> yeah. Millions. No idea. <laughs> But it sounds like you have some incredible core values to yourself and experiences that have shaped you. Yeah. So how are you incorporating that into your business? So a big part of what I do is I do it because I love it. And I love serving people. You know, I've been, yeah. my father was a pastor and I've been in church all my life. So yeah. I've always had a life of service and a life of loving people. And I love people through my food. So one of the things I want to do with my business also is to give back to organizations that are in need the most. And I've met this incredible, you know, lady who has a business here in Detroit where she services, you know, women veterans and specifically focusing on those that really need help and try to help with homelessness. So I partnered with her and we're going to do some amazing things. And once wow. my business gets up, a part of my proceeds will go to that organization and other organizations that need help. Wow, that is especially awesome. women and children because that's my story of struggling. Yeah, absolutely. With just being a single mom. Yeah, and having little resources. Yes, and I mean I completely can align with you. As look, we were getting on, you heard my son come in. And I'm like, I've been a single mom for the last know. six years, and I'm like, it's a real thing. I mean, and getting to, I mean, working and I think with. It's so yeah. cute. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like it's I, a part of our story, though. You know, it's what shaped us that mm -hmm, we we got to mm -hmm. do this because it's mm -hmm. for them. We're going to make yeah. something work. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. part of it too, just being able to pass something down to my children. And, you know, they, when, yeah. when we, when we were struggling, I taught them how to bake. I taught them how to cook. Oh. So they had two girls. So they're, of course, they both have those skills now. They both know how to bake. They know how to cook. And if they need to rely on that for any reason, <laughs> they know they can, you know. Yeah. And they have a first, like a success story, like firsthand, you know, they get to experience oh, uh, that. Yes. And they actually also are a big help to me too. Yeah. As you can see, technically I needed her. Yeah. <laughs> that was my daughter. Oh, I so love they that. helped me out a lot. Yeah. So what do you think is the key to building like the successful brand that you have in a very competitive landscape of the food industry? So what is so amazing about my actual business is because it's different out of all the restaurants and food businesses even just in Detroit I there are very few uh Filipino you know Filipino food restaurants businesses yeah. and definitely a lot of people don't know about what ube is yeah Filipino name for purple yam so I'm excited because I know because it's an untapped type of industry, or untapped type of ingredient or, you know, type of food. I've fused the Filipino food with soul food. So my market is going to be for everyone. Yeah. Some people know about purple yam and it's also a very, very healthy ingredient. So I'll be making savory products too. So I know that it, my market is not even just for a certain type of person, it's for everyone for health reasons yeah. with the savory products. And then just with the sweet products, it's just something that people love once they taste it. Yeah. And that has been proven with just the few items that Trader Joe's has put out. And people flock to it and they can't even keep it on the shelf. It is not even authentic in its flavor. But 
they don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> to get my products on the store shelf so people can kind of understand a little bit more about what it is. No, that's awesome. And I love to see yeah. the different the different pieces, you know, even just you were saying Ube is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I'm pretty it's sure I've seen U- it. I've, yeah, I've never seen that before, but I bet if it's anything similar to like a sweet potato with people making things with that, I'm like, this must be another level and a prettier that's color. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's just yeah. a yam versus a sweet potato, just like you have an orange sweet potato and then you have a your orange yam. The yeah. difference is, is that this ingredient is mostly harvested in the Philippines. Okay. So usually they have... Um, have it imported here into the U.S. by way of like powdered in powder okay. form or in frozen form. But I just interchange the sweet potato and just use them both. So that's awesome. That's how I use it. Yeah. So as we are nearing Detroit uh, in a few short weeks, it seems like, mm-hmm. how are you preparing for this pitch? What has been a challenge? How are you really getting yourself like amped up and ready to go? Wow, such a great question, because when I first found out, I was kind of busy. Um, Like, so I I don't have a service related disability, but I do have a disability with, you know, my mobility. And um, so I I have osteoarthritis uh, just from just years of being on my feet and just years of just, you know, just use struggling because for years I rode the bus and didn't even have a car. So I just recently got a car like a few years ago. So when I found out that I was selected, I was doing like a summer job at the Henry Ford Museum. I was one of the actors and presenters. So I was kind of ending that and it just ended last weekend. So as it was ending, I found out about this organization uh, that uh, helps entrepreneurs uh, come to a place where they can have their pitch evaluated and critiqued. So I thought, oh, well, that's a nice resource, but, you know, I haven't gotten into that yet. So what I'm excited about is just actually sitting down and deciding, do I tell the PC version of my story or do I tell the <laughs> raw, real-life yeah. version of my story, which, you know, I want to tell that. Yeah. I don't want to sugarcoat it really. So I want to get help from you guys in how to, how much I should reveal or should I, you know, it's just like you were saying about motherhood. Any mother yeah. knows it's just it's hard mm-hmm. and it's rewarding too, but it can be hard and it's levels to it depending on how much support you have and how much resource you have. So I'm excited about just sitting down now that I'm free from, you know, the summer job and just being raw and being authentic and being honest about my real story, (laughs) you know, which some of it I share with you. So, and I just want to know exactly how much time we're going to have to do that because I don't want to get, you know, long-winded and miss points, but I really want to tell what my real story is. Oh, absolutely. And raw and authentic is always going to be the way to go. And after hearing the pitches in Iowa this past March, I mean, there are some things that are very deep and personal that were shared during these stories, because honestly, those those spaces that we get to and those experiences are absolutely what shapes us and what we bring into our value system, our foundations and how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly important. And they're going to prepare you all for that. That's why it's so exciting to talk before the pitch and before the event, because there's so much that goes into it, not just showing up you do it and then it's over so I mean this is a really exciting time Um, yeah and so could you share with you know everyone listening to how did you become involved in Warrior Rising and what was your experience like going through the academy and the accelerator program so like I said last year when I formed uh, Purple Heart Pastries I was part of a cohort with um, Grand Valley State University so that was with Michael Yep. And, you know, affiliated with them. So they had it in Battle Creek, but they opened it up to Detroit residents. So I drove two hours back and forth to Battle Creek for eight, I think it was like 10 weeks to be part of this cohort. And I pitched, you know, there and I I learned, you know, learned a lot. But that was where I had a mentor who helped me change that name and get some input. 
And as that was ending, of course, they had our email. And so I just started following people who were associated with that organization. And I think there was just a random email where I saw Teresa. I think it was yep. Teresa Irving. Mm -hmm. She had an email and it was something where I saw she was affiliated with Warrior Rising. And so the beginning of the year, I went on the website and I started the university before I knew about this pitch. So I'd already completed so much of it. So by the time the uh, the Grand Valley State uh, University sent us the email, I was already halfway through it. And so I was so excited. I was like, I feel like I'm doing the right thing, you know? I yeah. Like I'm on track with what I'm supposed to be doing. So when it was time to go through that before you could, you know, be part of the class, I was already halfway done. So oh, that's yeah. how I found out. About, so that's how I found out about Warrior Rising. And so I was like, and I found that it was virtual. I was like, this is so great. Oh, and, and so, at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah. And at my own pace, because I wasn't able to attend, you know, on Monday. So I would come home, you know, from where I was and then, you know, watch at night or watch the next day. Oh, take care of your baby. It doesn't bother me at all. Oh, no, you're fine. And, <laughs> and so that's how I found out about Warrior Rising. And that's how I found out about this actual pitch competition. Okay. Yeah, that's an incredible story. Okay. He's not dizzy anymore, everyone. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so that is awesome. And like the thing is, once you're a part of Warrior Rising, you're part of this tribe, this family, this community, you have that for life. Um, I'm still Appreciate connected it. that way. And it's, you know, we're all in some way like connected and I can't mm -hmm. wait to have shake everyone's hands out there and to hear right. the pitch, to be a part of this, you know, your story and journey. I was really happy to be a part of Warrior University to teach mindset um, yeah. for something for entrepreneurs that we don't always think about. We don't always like to think about ourselves first, <laughs> our business and our families That's and all these the other truth. things. That's yeah. true. It's true. so true. Yep. So for other veterans out there who are looking to, you know, start their business, maybe they thought of something they haven't started, they had, like, maybe they haven't at all. What would your pieces of advice be to them? So that's a great question because I feel like a lot of veterans that I have just recently met feel like they can't do things or, or maybe they don't know where to find resources. But the first the first step to me is just have a desire to want to be better, to want more, and to want to pursue whatever dream you have or whatever idea you have that's on the inside that you just haven't acted on. And so the first step is just to take a first step, you know, and I feel like if they can see an example, you know, I'm a veteran who only served for two years, but I still serve and I'm still a veteran. And it formed, you know, values in me that stay with me for life. So I feel like if they see someone who is an example of who are, who are doing things, I can pass on this information to other veterans that I know so they can know how to start. And this would be a great start is to be affiliated with Warrior Rising and to just desire to be an entrepreneur and have something for yourself that you can own. I think that's just the first step is actually seeing someone who's doing it and see yeah. a success story. And there's so many success stories if you just click on the website. Yeah, absolutely. people who are yeah. doing it and have done it. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's so incredible. And with like, as everyone's trying to build like that brand awareness and like, who are we? Who is Warrior Rising? <laughs> um, when I became, you know, aligned with them and started working on their team, I feel like, mm -hmm. what is this thing? I have a lot of veterans on my, you know, network and they're just mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that existed. I'm like, I didn't either when I got out of the right. military. Like, heck, I wish I knew that it existed. So right. it's really awesome to continue to spread that message and to continue to see people win because that's what we want at the end of the day. There's so right. many resources, incredible people. Um, and so I'm really glad you got to experience that and you spread the word and you're, you know, kind of vouching for it too. It's at your own pace. You get to go online or some in person they're doing in Detroit, which is awesome as well. Right. But it's been awesome to watch the journeys. I'm very excited for next month and I'm um, super excited. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so awesome to continue expanding the network and seeing other veterans, you know, get passionate mm -hmm. about what they're doing in the world. Um, mm -hmm. cause usually just like yourself, uh, veterans, tend all their businesses they tend to want to continue to serve after service right like you want to yeah. continue to serve your communities um, right it's beautiful 
It really is. So Mary, I just wanted to thank you for coming on and talking to us. We will be circling back to you after the event, but can you let okay. everyone listening know where can they find you or your product or whatever you're doing? Can you share that with everyone now and any other last uh, tidbits you'd like to, to give to the audience? Sure. So um, I do have Instagram. It's uh, on Instagram. I just kind of formed that. And then Manila Soul Food is a separate Instagram because I formed that one first. But I also am on Instagram, uh, Miriam's underscore cookies, M-I-R-I-A-M-S underscore C-O-O-K-I-E-S. And I'm also on Facebook uh, under Miriam Everhart. And I do post a lot of my pictures and a lot of my food and stories on there because right now I'm, because I'm a startup, I don't have a website yet, but I'm working on that. And of course, I talked with Preston and he said he would, you know, provide help. So my my message is that be excited about something in your life. <laughs> you know, I know life can be hard and there are just periods of times where, you know, we just go through things. Sometimes, you know, you may be going through depression or just periods of, you know, not seeing any hope, but if you just have the desire to just look up and get up and just mm-hmm. tap into that thing inside of you that is a dream, tap into that thing inside of you that does not die. And you know what that thing is because it yeah. never leaves you. And then just make one step, one move. And and that's all I did because my 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 simple love was I loved cookies. <laughs> yeah. It was my favorite dessert. And I just made a business out of it. And then it turned into something and now it has turned into this. And so yeah. that's what makes me so excited because I didn't do it to make money. I didn't, well, I did it to make just a few coins, but I did yeah. it because I loved cookies and yeah. gained the weight from it too. So just find something that you love and just do it. And it may seem hard, but just one little step is all it takes. And so that's all I want to leave people is just, Watch other people who are doing it. And if they can do it, you can do it. And with God's help, all things are possible. So just have faith in yourself and just believe that as you move, God will send people to help you. And you will understand that you're not alone. Wow. What an awesome way to end this interview. But I really appreciate you, Miriam. You have an incredible story. I cannot wait to again meet you and hear it. Um, in a different yeah. light as well, a little under pressure, but that's okay. We can do this. We can yeah. do all things. So <laughs> yeah. And I follow you on Instagram and I oh, awesome. just start following you on uh, Facebook. So incredible. I'll just, uh, make sure I keep communicating. Absolutely. We are now in a network, but thank you again for coming on. I look forward to meeting you in real life, in the flesh. In real yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> to everyone listening. Yeah. Thank you so much. These are incredible veterans. They're headed off to Detroit. And we cannot wait to follow up with them. But thank you for always tuning in to Warrior TV and Warrior Rising. We'll see you next time.